Welcome Amakosi Network, welcome to the channel. Uh, please subscribe if you have not subscribed. Thank you to those who have subscribed. Today we're chatting about Mhango, Kanisa Mayo and the ratings we're just going to give to the players. Maybe not all the players, but what are you going to give to the players who had enough time to really prove themselves? Kabadiyo Mohango. Oh, yeah, his name is a tongue twist. So Mohango, guys, Chiefs is talking to apparently from sources like ASAPC and Unplayable. They're the ones who said um, Chiefs is talking to him. Bobby yesterday came and said uh, uh, there's nothing about Mohango. But that time he said it's uh, Keza Jr. is the one who's doing transfers. So how does he know? You see, so he, he he was just saying things for vibes. He was saying things for vibes. He was saying no to Mohango. But then in that same comment he made, he was saying Kezam Daung Jr. does signing. So he doesn't know anything. So then how does he know about me? Hey, you know, Bobby, sometimes he likes just throwing spice and chakalaka to situations that doesn't deserve it. But anyway, uh, that is the Mohango news. What do I think about Mohango? Look, guys. Mohango for me has many pros and many cons, right? Let me start with the good things. Number one, we can't just have Duba and Rana as our striker. So we do need another striker. Ne? Sharp. So we do need an, another striker. Does Mohango know how to score? Yes, he knows how to score. Um, does he know how to play Ama 1 2? Yes, he knows how to play Ama 1 2. But has he been able to really, really, really sustain himself? And show that he can handle pressure at big teams. No, he has not proved it. He struggled at Pirates. He had off the field issues and, and struggled with the coaches there, etc. And then now he's at he was at Amazulu, same story. Amazulu is becoming a big brand, struggled at uh, Amazulu, etc. etc. So Mohango has issues. I don't know, maybe when he starts getting popular or famous or whatever the case may be because whenever he starts a bit hot he gets excited and then things just go bad so maybe you must visit his sangoma to be like hey i'm telling a man when i start shining but anyway that's my thing on muhango he can't score goals we know what he can do but hey and muhango was once touted to be one of the best players coming out of africa so he's a talented boy but he's old now also so now let me go into the cons. Cons is age also. Yes, age is nothing but a number. We can see with Lewandowski, Abo Messi, Abo Ronaldo, etc. etc. Age is nothing but a number. But those people I mentioned were scoring every day for their lives. Bread and butter was scoring. Benzema, bread and butter was scoring. Mango is not scoring every day. He's not playing every day. So that's a different story. But age is nothing but a number. So the con is his age. So my thing is that now we have two 30-year-old strikers and a 19-year-old striker who we don't even give chances to play. So do with that what you will. Uh, other cons is off-the-field issues. Mahango has problems off the field. Like I said, when he gets excited, whatever fame or whatever gets to his head and he starts having drama off the field. I don't know what the drama is, but we've heard people say that it's rumors. So it could not be true, but... When a player stops playing for no reason, but they they for no reason, it has to be there has to be a real problem. So, off the field issues, uh, injuries I don't think have ever been too big of a deal in his book. So I think he should be fine. Chiefs pressure is an issue. You come to Chiefs, I said the other day, if you Souza wrong, people will be like ha 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 umboni, we are missing and then you are Souza and then yo, then you become a comma for life. So. In Chiefs, you can't be swag. Like uh, Caleb. Caleb came to South Africa. He, no one really knew about him in the world, but they weren't saying he's a bad player. Hey, he's going to leave Chiefs. People are going to be like, he's a pop, pop player. And it will be known that all Chiefs fans will be saying, hey, that one is useless. So yeah, that's uh, Kabadino Mohango. Kanisa Mayo. The reason why I wanted to bring up Kanisa Mayo is not that there's a rumor. Right, but I think Jessica Mutawung said mentioned that she wants to sign um Kanisa Mayo, but uh she said Cape Town City don't want to release him and they want amount of like over 20 million for him. So my question is, guys, as I mentioned before, we have now if we sign Mohango, uh we have two 30-year-old uh, strikers 
and a 19 year old striker that Chiefs does not want to play. So my question is, would it not be better for Chiefs to just take out that 20 million rand and pay Cape Town City and get Kanye Samayo? Would that not be our best option? He won't solve all our, our situations. But if Kanisa Mayo can at least give us 10 goals in a season, like 10, it's not a lot. It's not a lot. And I know we want him to have 25 and everything. But now, if he can just give us like 10 goals and maybe 6 to 7 assists, it will be better than nothing. Like better than nothing. And chances are he will play. Chances are he will play, unlike what we are seeing with Duba and all of them, because I don't know why they don't trust Duba. But anyway, chances are Kanisa Mayo will play. So my thing is like, look, it's a one-time investment. It may fail, but I would pay Cape Town City. That 20 million, me, if I was Chiefs, I would pay uh, um, Cape Town City 20 million, bring in Kanisa Mayo, let him play for Chiefs, let him shine in FNP Stadium, the big stadiums, because you can see he likes the big stadiums. He likes the, those big stadiums, and that's where we play. So I think Ukanyi Samayo would be one of our best players if we bought him. So I say that is a player we have to buy. But because we are Kaiser Chiefs, it Chiefs a yeah, team yama freebies, it Chiefs yama choice, a team yama choice condom, it Chiefs is into Zamahala, it Chiefs yeah buy one get one free, it Chiefs yeah. Anyway, we know what we are, and it's sad that a big team like this has resorted to such cheap things. But yeah. That is what I think there. So, guys, tell me what you think about my take on Kanisa Maya. Uh, uh, like, subscribe, comment, guys. You guys are not commenting. Comment, guys. Even if you say, ah, oh, we are bad and we are nuga, no masinguz, we are nuga. Say it, guys. We want to hear. Um, and then next one, guys. Um, ratings. So, this one, I'll try to keep it. Go as quick as possible through them just to give the ratings. Peterson. Hey, Baba Peterson. Stop going out of the polls. And playing like you know how to play out of the poles. You can see we are we are conceding useless goals. So you must prevent playing so far up, up the pitch. Peterson rating, I'll just give him... What can I give him? Because he didn't really have much to... But he did have a good save. So let's, just, let's give him a 6.5. He didn't do anything wrong. 6.5. You know, sometimes hard rating a keeper when they didn't really have too much to do. So 6.5. Sharp. Uh, next one, let's say left back Clanty. Clanty, for some reason, you know, it's just thing of fitness. I don't know, something's wrong with Chiefs players and fitness. For Clanty, does not look like he's in the great shape. And the one thing I'll say, guys, Kevin Hunt said this thing the other day. He said he doesn't understand why Nange looks so out of shape. That is what Kevin Hunt said about a player who was already training with Chiefs in preseason. You know how scary things like that sound when a coach who has come number two in a league, comes and tells you guys, or number three in the league, sorry, comes and tells you guys, good, the player you guys have released to join me and who was already doing preseason with you guys is out of shape. That What does that mean for our players who are already there? Who's good they're out of shape? And that's what I saw yesterday. Our players are not in condition. Our players are not in shape. Our players, this... Our Scansonzo of a fitness coach, he is questionable. I'm starting to question him. Hmm? You know, Chiefs, I think Chiefs biggest, this may, may be Chiefs' biggest mistake. When we started making our fitness coaches um, men, because when we had that female lady, female coach, that white lady, Chiefs was doing okay, and then Mushin said he doesn't want a lady. But... You know, maybe the ladies are the one. Maybe we must make the that let my bring back that Makoko and make her the fitness coach. Cause the ladies sometimes do the job. Look at that lady who transformed Peter Shaolili and now who's in um Europe and was also with the Sundance ladies. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Clanty, I'll give him <sighs> what can I give him? He just look he didn't look like he looked a bit lost, but I'll give him a five point five. I I don't even know. Uh, the clock the clock was struggling with the pitch when the ball was getting kicked in the end was bouncing it was like uh, it was it was struggling a bit so and there were a few times the the striker got past him so the clock I'll give him a five because he, it wasn't his best but he was okay maybe even a 5.5 .5, but he was okay 
Um, who was playing? Uh, Njabulo Ngobo. Ngobo actually had a, one of the better games. But one thing I warn Ngobo about is that, yes, when you have the ball, you must run forward. Ne? Like you run into the space. But don't run with such a pace that you close space. Because the thing Ngobo does not realize, which is something I told you yesterday, Chiefs players lack movement. So if you have the ball and you're running forward and then the people in front of you are not moving, they are like statues, then what's going to happen is that you're going to get them, there's going to be a roadblock and you are the last line of defense. So if you lose the ball, ah, it's tickets. And we were playing uh, Township Rollers, they didn't look like they had quick players. When we play in the DSTV Premiership, they are super quick players. So they'll beat you. So that's what I'll say about Unjabulongob. I'll give him a 6. He was one of the better center backs. Uh, right black, back, Frostler. Hey, Frostler, hey. it wasn't anything exceptional. He did his job. But the one thing I'll say, when Frostler goes up, his recovery is very bad. And that's how teams beat us. That's how... in. in the township rollers was exposing his side. So that's why I'll give him 5.5. He was getting exposed too much when he goes up because he's slow to, to recover. He relies too much on, on the defensive mid. And that's why I say Solomon's is better with recovery, but hey, Solomon's will get into him. He also had a bad day. And it may be because of the field. I don't know. But yeah, he also had a bad day. Castillo. Castillo, I'll give him. I know I was very critical of, of him yesterday. Um and and that's my my from my perspective. I don't wanna say I'm gonna give you the public perspective, what people are saying out there, then I'll give you my perspective. My perspective. So uh based on what people were seeing, people will still give him a seven. Yeah? Sharp. What people were seeing, they will give him a seven, and then what from what I was seeing, I'll give him a six. So for me, why I say I'll give him a six, or maybe even a six point five, but let me say six. I said he he had nice passes with his outside of his right foot and he he was he was do, he, he played simple sometimes where it's good but there are a lot of times where he could have started an attack and he just looked lost he doesn't look like he's aware of his surroundings all the time so that's that's my word and the, I remember I said yesterday something is something I'm not seeing there and I was like when we start getting pressured by teams because when you play against DSTV Premiership teams, they know that Chiefs is not comfortable in the midfield and in defense. So they're going to press us 100%. 90 minutes will probably going to be pressed. And if that's the case, I feel like he's going to be exposed a lot. And that's my issue because he doesn't have seem to have all awareness of what's around him. And I'm not sure why, but we'll see. We'll see. I hope I'm wrong. But yeah. Uh, Sitebe, Sitebe, I'll give a six. Uh, didn't do too much. He wasn't bad. I, you know, he was just okay. He defended where he could, and he tried mo to start moves where he could. But I, I feel like compared to last season, I didn't see him that much. But yeah, I'll give him a six. And Gosimpilo Ngobo, Ngobo, I'll give him, I'll give him a. I want to say 7. Né? I want to say 7. But I also want to say 6.5. Because Ngobo has this recovery issue that he's not fixing. When going into defense, he is not fixing in, in that thing. Um, going into defense, but in combination, he's a star. And one thing I will say about Ngo Simpile Ngobo. Ngobo is lacking players who can play simple football. I'm a one touch. Because that is what Ungobo is lacking. And when Ungobo plays close to Umdu, he can do it. Yesterday, he struggled to do it with Umashati, but I think when Umodi comes in, or Rudoli, or someone like that, it will be better. So Ungo Simpile Ungobo, I think, may start against Chiba. I think Ungobo will start against Chiba. If, if, if I have my... If what I'm thinking is right, Ungobo will start against Chiba. Okay. Umashati. Uh, Umashati... You know what? I've been trying to give, try to save the boy as much as I could because I've, I've seen his talent from young ages and I've seen what he can be. And I, like I always say, he reminds me of Emantla Masango who hasn't found the coach to really get his talent out. And 
That is my thing about Uma Shati. And But Uma Shati yesterday, based on his performance, I'll give him a 3, maybe even a 4. The reason why I say 4 is that at least he created some chances. He did create some chances in the first half, but he he's not a winger. That's one thing I'll say. He just kept making mistakes. Playing on the line is not his baby. But uh, yeah, let's say for I, there's nothing more I can say. I can't defend the guy too much because he wasn't a good game. We can't lie. He did create here and there, but it wasn't a good game. Um, and then right wing was Umdu. Umdu, I'll give maybe seven or six point five. The maybe six point five because Umdu missed the tap in number one. Umdu missed the tap in. He could have easily scored a goal, but he kicked it straight to the keeper when he was one on one. He missed a tap in. And this is what I said in the other video Ndu has to score. And that's his biggest problem, but we can't put pressure on him. He's still a young boy, only 19, only turning 20 next year. But we know we want him to be the Mbappes of the world. But if you don't have a right coaching, you will never be Mbappe. If you people aren't coaching you right, how will Mbappe just come out of thin air? Mbappe has been in places where there's proper coaching. So yeah, um, do I'll give him 6.5. Um, and because of that miss, and also when he was, when he was, his decision making, sometimes he just gets frustrated. You can see the boy, he's a player who has talent and gets frustrated sometimes with the people around him. Because he got to a point where he just beat all the players on the right and instead of crossing, he shot to the keeper. Where Saile and I think Mashati were open for tapping. So things like that. Make him make me give make me don't wanna I don't wanna give him a seven. Even I'll even say six, but maybe that's being too hard. So six point five. Um Saile, Saile, I'll give a five. Saile is, is not a striker. He yeah, he can't bend his runs. Saile is not a striker. And my thing is that he's, he's lacking coaching because he can't time his runs. It's very it's very bad. He, you know what Saile could be? Saile could be uh, Richard Henyekani, if he gets his his pacing right. Because Richard Henyekani always knew. He used to run deep. He used to bend his run so much. He used to bend that run so hard. And then by the time he starts his run, the player is kicking because he knows uh, the last man is finished. You won't get him. So Silent needs to learn how to do So I'll give him a five. Uh, let's think. Next players. Are, you know the ones who came in in the second half. I don't really want to give them ratings because the team was very like mixed up and lost and all of that. And yeah, I, like Solomon was poor. I don't know what was happening. It looked just looked like the coaches didn't substitute people right. Like Mdanzene was played out of position. Duba and um, and Dupree. It just looked it looked bad. The substitutions when they came on, it just didn't gel. It didn't look right. So those are my ratings, guys. Tell me what your ratings are. All I can say is that Kuzo Shuba this season. Konozo Kala, Konozo Lasha. Something is gonna happen this season. And I just want and hope that we don't cry. We must not cry as cheese fans. But yeah, tell me what you guys think. Shapa Makosi Network and subscribe.